always wonderful to have the opportunity to talk to you. Okay, first That's of all, so nice. I'm such a huge fan of the of the first film. So when I found out that you guys were making another one, I was like, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But That's this, nice. It gave me all the feels. Like it wasn't just you know, feel good, happy, go lucky. There was a lot going on there, you know, in terms of the emotions and there's some drama, a lot going on, Jim. What, James, what was it for you that you decided, you know, if I take this forward, this had to be, I guess, an important part of why you would make another one. Okay, so there are two things. One is that they wanted to make another movie, uh, They, but they wanted Jim to be the lead. So I had a certain amount of, I had, should we just say power? Just for the well, hell of it. Yes, yeah, so you always have power. It's all good, my friend. Well, you have a certain amount. Well, it means what you can do is you can say, what I'd love to do, and I'd like to explore these things. It can, Is there any room to explore these things? Firstly, they said, um, and they end up at Glastonbury, and it looks like we'd be able to play Glastonbury. Right. In front of right. 100,000 people. Now, I live in the West Country of England. It, Glastonbury is 25 minutes up the road from me. Glastonbury is a big deal around here. So, well, it's a big deal everywhere, but it's especially a big deal in Somerset. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I went, oh, really? Glastonbury? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. You'll probably get 15 minutes. Probably get to sing the song once, maybe one and a half times if you're lucky. Uh, we'll have a load of camera crews and we just hope that we get it. Yeah. Okay, great. And then the pandemic happened and then Glastonbury got cancelled. So we had to shoot it in a field right. in Cornwall. But by then I was already in. Yeah. the process and i talked to meg and nick and we talked we just talked a lot about what you know by the way in in your in the film your character says you know jim says it's okay not to be okay which i think yeah. is a really important message it is and i think the other thing that one of the things that i think i'd like people to take away from the film is that however depressed however low you feel about something tomorrow really is another day yeah and uh you know the suicide statistics for male depression of men in their 50s is just off the scale in in terms of in comparison to women is terrible absolutely yeah. terrible like five times more yeah and that, that was a stat that i looked at and was just my, my goodness me um and i wanted to kind of i just but you know i'm very aware because i feel it when i go to the movies i'm very aware that uh Movies and theatre give you uh, 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 the ability to give you a sense that you are not alone. Absolutely. Yeah. You are yeah. going through things that other people go through. And it, just because you feel terrible about something doesn't mean to say other people don't go through those things. They do go through those things. And you can see somebody on a, in a movie or you can watch somebody on stage and you can feel less alone because of it. And uh, I wanted to explain explore that and i wanted to explore it to 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 give a voice to those people who had lost people and to you know there's there's a speech when he's lying in bed and i wanted to you know and we we pretty much wrote that on the day yeah. when he's lying in bed with a melder and he's talking about all the little things that we all remember about right. somebody who's passed and there's sometimes they're tiny they're little banal boring little details like hands on faces or you know just those little things that people did with each other that I find I find very moving things that I think about about my own parents who've died yeah, yeah. so you know I wanted to I wanted to explore that and I wanted to talk about that I think and uh but I, I didn't see it was really how do you fit that how do you have that as the common as the central thread of what is essentially a rom-com feel-good movie well, it worked. I, think, I mean, there was there was it's a lot of work. Yeah. It is, but yeah. it is also about the fact that you know, you can be in a depression, but then suddenly you might see a little bit of blue sky. Oh, for sure. You know, and yeah. that blue sky might get bigger. I live out in the countryside here. We get big skies, and we had shitty weather recently. But you know, <laughs> we're trying to do a lot of building work outside. And just yesterday, there was a tiny bit of blue sky in the distance. And I said to the guy helping me build the wall, I said, "No, no look, there is hope. There's hope. There is." I mean, that's coming in, dude. Yeah. And it did. It became sunny by the end of the day. But yeah, I, I'm probably being crass and, and cheesy, but it, that's. No, no, no. That, but, but you're right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it that makes thing a complete where, point. Yeah. No, no. Absolutely. I think that, that's, the, that's one of the points about the film is that, you know, things we, things can get better tomorrow. Yeah. And they no don't question. get better tomorrow if you're dead. 
Well, that that's for sure. No, no, that is for you sure. Know, and I, I, I think, I think the movie balances it out really, really well. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and to, to, you know, to say the least, to be able to reunite with the gang and yeah. get up there and sing again together. I mean, you know, I the idea the thing we shot during lockdown, and one of the great things about the movie is or what one of the unforeseen things that happened. So we arrived there about two weeks before a lockdown. There was nobody in the village. Nobody. I mean, like it was just quiet as a mouse. I mean, nothing going on. And uh, one of the things we realized pretty quickly is that all the scenes that were internal scenes in the pub, in people's houses, all that kind of stuff, we were going to have to go like, Oof, cut that right down. But what that gave us was an ability to get out there. Yeah. And suddenly the whole film opens up in a way that the first one was much more internalized and right. less aware of the absolute awesome majesty that Cornwall can offer as a location. Beautiful. Um, you know, so we spent so much more time out on cliff paths and, you know, uh, sitting outside the house with Imelda and, and what an honour, by the way, her. She yeah. is just an absolute diamond. And that is definitely not going to be the last we hear of Imelda May on film. No, I, I was going to say my heart really bled for you with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad yeah. you had to do those scenes with her. Yeah, love scenes. Yeah, I know, really tough. Too bad, yeah. <laughs> You got to take it for the team, I guess, you know, sometimes, yeah. right? But I got I think I, that was the other thing, by the way. I think that's another thing that's important for me was I wanted to show late love. You know, yes. there are a lot of films with late love. But one of the things that we're all dealing with in the movie industry right now is everybody's story has got to be told. Yeah. And we should all be able to go to the movie theatre and feel like we're seeing ourselves in whatever films there is, whether it be of race or colour or, or sexuality or gender or class or any of those things, but also... All the people fucking fall in love too, you know? Yeah, hello, you know? exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's the thing. The film also deals with what the guys went through, you know, in terms of yeah. the fame. Here they are, they get, you know, in, into the mm -hmm. public, they're on tour, they've got to deal with their fame, all that kind of stuff. And it deals with how kind of everybody deals with it. You yourself, of course, are no stranger to fame. And okay. I wanted to ask you, when you look back at your career, James, what was the show that, or, you know, I mean, you're no stranger to series work, that's for sure. And people love watching their series and they get very involved with mm -hmm. these characters. How, you know, something like the following or just whatever you were in. Kind of depends where you, you are in with? the world. How that's, did you deal yeah. with him? How did you? Well, that's the important him? thing. It is depends where you are in the world, where those things, when those things go out, if you're in New York, and the following is on and it's being watched by whatever 18 million people a week that can that's quite a heady yeah heady mix you know but bear in mind also i was in my 40s by the time i did that it was no spring chicken i was you know this didn't happen to me when i was a kid i still it, you know, know i i you've been, on purpose but you've been around I was, for a long time like i mean you've been making things like an art listen i know I but i think one of the things i'm saying is that i spent the first eight years of my career on purpose on stage yeah, I yeah, was yeah. asked to do TV and film. I just didn't do it. Right. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't want to learn the craft in front of millions of people. Yeah, I wanted to learn it on stage. And then it was only after I'd done a lot of plays all over the country and the National Theatre and the Royal Shakespeare Company and blah, 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 blah. And then I went, OK, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm good enough now with this. And yeah. I can I can I could do this now. You know, nowadays people just come straight out of drama school and get a you score a hit series and or a hit film and they find it very difficult because mm. they're not grown ups. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I hear you. I hear you for sure. Yeah. It, uh, so how have I felt I, I I've always been uh, I don't I don't court it. I don't go to the parties. I don't like going to the, unless it's unless it's my own film. I won't go to a premiere. I don't mm. I don't I don't you know why you don't buy into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's for the love and and, and honestly, now I got to tell you that right, I, I'm speaking to you from Toronto, okay. and in a few weeks we are getting here in Mervish Productions the theatrical Fisherman's Friend the musical. Friends, oh I know, I saw the poster of it the other day, and I am so excited. I already have my tickets, so I'm inviting <laughs> you. No, I'm, I'm joking. I do. I already have my tickets. I've got them. I'm all set. Great. To come to Toronto to show up to a performance. What do you think? I think it'll oh, be I, I, do you know what? You How here. much I would love to do that. I really would love to do that. Sadly, I'm going to be. Do, I'm about to start shooting a series with the lovely Ava Longoria. Ooh, lucky you! Yes. Another, another 
beautiful woman. Again, my heart. Oh, really that's crazy. yeah, that's nice. So I'm starting to do that in Spain. Nice. Nice to be in Spain when England is like this because right now it's bad. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the weather, is just dank and wet and cold and dark. Uh, so I'm going to Spain to shoot that for a few weeks, which will be lovely. So uh, I won't be going to Toronto, but I did see. I looked at the post. I went. They go to Toronto with that. Yes. Yes. For like a month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We get everything. Uh, but what I gather, it's a great, great show, by the way. I've read lots of reviews. It's really terrific. I haven't managed to catch it yet, but I'm desperate to catch it. You will. Uh, I think they all sing really, really beautifully, probably I'm much sure. better than us. Oh, so, you guys uh, are good. Listen, I, like I said, I love a good yeah. shanty, so I'm going to be singing right along with them. You and are going to have such a good time. I Believe cannot you, wait. Me. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm going with my 85-year-old mother, and she's very excited. Oh, she's going to love it. <laughs> Well, James, listen, like I said, always a pleasure to talk to you. Talk to you. I really so nice talking to you again. Take care. And by the way, because you didn't get to meet Beyonce, you got to work yeah. on something, a collaboration yeah. there. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Give you what? Fisherman's Friends, a Fisherman's Friends Beyonce mashup. I think that would work really, really well. We'll talk to Jay Z and we'll make it happen. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so much. I love talking to you. Have a great day. Have a great day, too. It's a winner. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.